we need to have a discussion about pass keys because y'all have been asking nonstop for me to talk about them for the past three months in my comments. And I get why. It can be confusing because you have the term pass key, password, password list, etc. So why are we introducing something else to this ecosystem that's already confusing? Because we need better security and that's what pass keys give us. Y'all, we hate passwords. You enter your username and your password for usual login logins and you log in. Now, hopefully that password is long and complicated, or it could be figured out by an attacker or a hacker. Hopefully it's different than every other password, or if it's leaked, somebody could use it to log into your other accounts. On top of that, you also have your two-factor or multi-factor authentication standards, your YubiKey hardware key, your 2FA code sent via SMS, and your 2FA app like Google Authenticator or Authy. Now I've covered the biggest misconceptions and questions about 2FA in a video posted late last year, but each of these includes an additional step after the username and the password fields. YubiKeys, while used for 2FA, also have passkeys built in. Now I am happy to share that Yubico is sponsoring this video and Yubico as a company has been a leader in developing better security for the consumer and business industries and they are actively educating folks on how to use passkeys and why this will be a better choice over what we currently have. Now I will be delving into exactly how to use a YubiKey as a passkey in a future episode so comment down below if that's something you would be interested in but I will share some of those features in this this video as well while explaining what passkeys are in general. Now my intention with this series of videos is not only to educate myself on how they work as I research passkeys and share that information with you, but also help people who are most at risk. I have advocated for people to use hardware keys long before the term passkey was even a thing and long before I ever even worked with Yubico. Yubico wants to push this industry forward and that's a belief that I share so you can get a head start by using my coupon code for $5 off of a key. You can use the code Shannon Morse during checkout and see how YubiKeys can make security convenient and easy for your own lifestyle. So the future is now and it is called PassKeys. Can you tell that I'm pretty excited about it? Quite frankly, people are bad at password management. Remembering them, remembering to save them, saving them at all, not sharing them with people. If you do share them, make sure it's some way that is encrypted. Passwords are easy to steal or harvest from a site. They are a pain to use and remember, especially on things like mobile and smart home tech, like TVs. And if you aren't using a password manager, they can be tough to input without screwing up and having to type it in again. Or if you do have to type it in again, sometimes you find yourself copying and pasting passwords. Like all of this is bad. <laughs> all of it is very bad. So companies in the FIDO Alliance, which is this open industry association focused on the same mission, building better authentication standards, they have been working together on this problem with passwords. So that includes companies like Apple, Google, and Yubico. So TLDR, passkeys replace passwords. They are made to provide a faster, easier, more secure sign-in experience across websites and apps on your devices. Simply put, instead of putting in a username and a password to sign into an app or a website, you would use the same biometric that you use or a PIN that you use to normally unlock your device that you're on. And the app or the website will authenticate with your device and be set up to use that same piece of information to let you sign in every every single time. It sounds a little bit confusing and I immediately had devil's advocate questions, so let's delve in further. When you, the user, go to a website and decide to enable passkeys, the passkey is going to create two keys. You will have a private one and a public one. The private key is going to be stored on your device or your local account like my device I have here. The public one will be saved via the website or the server or whatever product that you are trying to access with your account. Now this public key over here on the website does not necessarily have to be kept private because it's only one part of a puzzle. And the website or the server can't do anything with it without your action over here on your device. The private key, which is saved over here, the one that's stored on your device, is 
so private that you don't even know what it is, unlike you would with a password that you memorized or that you can read out of a password manager. Just that alone makes it much harder to compromise that private key. So let's say, for example, you are trying to log in with a passkey. You send a request to sign in to the website. The website is going to respond with a single one-time use question, asking your device to create a signature, verifying that this website's public key matches with your private key. Now, if they both match, that signature will be sent back to the website and it lets you log in. So the website never gets a copy of your private key. It just gets a verification answer to that question. So the website checks the answer and makes sure it's legit by checking it against the public key. And as long as they match, you get signed in. Another way of looking at it, when you set up an account with a password, you send that password to the website and it's either encrypted, maybe it has salty hashes or not. And as users, we usually hope for the best, but we have no idea how a website is storing our passwords. And I know it's not salty hashes. I just like to say that because I like salty hash browns. Okay. Okay. Thieves constantly target websites because it's a literal gold mine, even if they are encrypted because today's technology does allow for some encryption standards to be reverse engineered in mere minutes. So pass keys offer an alternative. Each pass key you create for each account will be unique. The private key is saved on your device locally and never leaves it. The public key is stored on that website's server. One cannot work without the other. So when you attempt to log in, the website will send your device a request to high five, but your device has to agree to that high five. This use of public key cryptography in essence is not a new idea, but tacking it on top of some kind of requirement for biometric authentication like you use to unlock your device or something similar to that is pretty new. So all of this happens just as fast, if not faster, than a traditional login, and there's nothing you have to remember or type. So a fake site that's spoofing a real one cannot try and send you a verification question because your private key is gonna look at it and think, something looks sus about this domain. Kind the sus. There's nothing that you're typing in, so keyboard loggers will not work, nor can somebody creep on you at a coffee shop since there is no plain text password for them to see with their own eyes. A thief would need to steal both your device and have your passkey to compromise an account. So if you are using a biometric passkey, then that would surely stop most thieves unless they're also out there stealing your face and your fingerprint. And I watch enough true crime to know that that does happen, but luckily it's very rare. So this is all fine and dandy for one device, but what if you have multiple devices? Well, if you are using a passkey to sign into a provider like Google or Apple, those companies will sync your private key to your owned devices. But if you wanna share your passkey with another device or a spouse or a significant other, somebody else, in this case, passkeys should give that new device a request for you to approve. So you have to approve it so your spouse's device and your device handshake and they approve each other while also looking at proximity, such as while using Bluetooth to make sure the new device is actually nearby. This would happen P2P or peer to peer, not on the server side and the server shouldn't even care. All they need is the end verification signature and that public key. Your phone or computer would need to see a login notification that you would have to approve for that new device. And this part would authenticate with the server. Now, similarly, if you use a hardware passkey, you would simply plug your hardware key into the device that you wanna sign in on. Now, I know as soon as I said sync, the comments probably exploded. Don't worry, I will be your devil's advocate. A hardware bound passkey like the ones found on YubiKeys are phishing resistant because they cannot be copied. But if you need cloud syncing, passkeys that offer that backup can be more convenient as you can move from device to device. Now, obviously that's not going to be as secure as a hardware bound passkey, but you can make it to be secure for an average consumer if said consumer also takes steps to harden the security of their cloud account. So you can lock it down with biometrics. You can audit the devices that you're logged in on and you can force re-authentications. If you've watched my previous videos, I did a video all about cookies and that's exactly what I'm talking about 
when I talk about forcing reauthentications. Now this totally depends on your threat modeling and your lifestyle, as some forms of security will not be convenient for everyone, and I fully understand that. In some cases, a hardware key might be better if you use lots of different platforms, but if you only use Android or you only use Apple, it might be more convenient to just use their cloud syncing. And if you lose your device with the private key, what do you do? Well, hopefully you have set up some kind of backup plan like a hardware key or a recovery account, but the security has to trickle down to all of those products too. And your hardware key should be kept secret and safe. I know I always say that, but it's the Gandalf thing. And your recovery account also needs to be locked down too. Similar to hardware keys, Two is one and one is none. From the FIDO Alliance with pass keys, as long as the user has their device, they can sign in. There is nothing to forget. Because pass keys can be backed up, they can also be better protected from loss. So there are many different ways that threat modeling really comes into play with what kind of pass keys you choose to use. Of course, this new authentication method is still in its infancy. So there are plenty of sites and devices that still don't support it. And if that is the case, falling back on the best options that we have, like YubiKeys for 2FA, an authenticator app for 2FA, and password managers that generate strong, unique passwords are all still a thing and very much a requirement. If you think that all of this sounds familiar, that's because it is. Inherently, this is WebAuthn and FIDO standardization. And if you bought a YubiKey in recent years, it already has passkey functionality built in since 2018. So you can use your YubiKey already to store your device-bound passkeys and let it hold the private FIDO credentials for up to 25 accounts. Although, and I will mention, Yubico has said they are evaluating increasing this number in the future. So now we know how passkeys work, how they are being implemented, and what questions do you have? I really wanna know. I would love to delve deeper into this topic with some tutorials maybe. So let me know if this is something that you would enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this broke down passkeys for you. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.